Hi YouTube, so it is Elizabeth back with another video for you guys. Um, for those of you who are new to my channel, I am a labor and delivery and postpartum nurse and a certified childbirth educator and I make videos on labor, delivery, postpartum, breastfeeding, baby stuff, and motherhood. Um, and this video is going to be how to get your sweet, beautiful, little stubborn baby to take a bottle um, if you are somebody who is exclusively breastfeeding and dealing with that difficulty or anticipating that that could be a difficulty when you go back to work. Um, my last video was on paste bottle feeding and I definitely recommend checking that out if you are going to be bottle feeding a breast baby because paste bottle feeding is a really important way that you need to be giving your baby a bottle to mimic breasts so that baby doesn't develop a flow preference to the bottle because uh, bottles can be easier to get milk out of than a boob. You have to work a little bit harder for a boob. Um, so I'm going to kind of split this video up into two parts. Part one is what I recommend you do if you are going to be going back to work and you have a newborn and you know that you are going to need your baby to be able to take a bottle at some point. Or if you know, you know, you might want a date night or something and you know that you want your baby to be able to seamlessly go back and forth between breast and bottle. So that's kind of part one. Part two of this video is going to be like, oh crap, I didn't do what was recommended in part one because we're way past that in the timeline and I'm going back to work tomorrow and I am freaking out. Um, things to kind of do in that scenario. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about giving a baby a bottle. So um, my recommendation and the recommendation that I have kind of heard going around is obviously we want to make sure that breastfeeding is pretty well established and I wouldn't give a bottle unless medically necessary or unless you you have to be separated for some reason in the early postpartum period until about uh, three to four weeks postpartum. I wouldn't even really start pumping until that point um, because you really just kind of want your body to figure out how much baby is taking and not create a massive oversupply. Um, when you do start pumping, if you're going to be going back to work, I think it's really important to remember that you don't need to have a freezer full of milk before you go back to work. You just really need a day or two's worth of milk. Um, so an ounce to an ounce 0.25 of milk for hours that you're going to be away from baby. Um, and then you're going to be pumping at work and making the milk at work that you'll bring home for baby for the next day. So around three to four weeks postpartum, I have done this with both my kids and it's, and it's worked pretty well, um, is I will pick a time either the morning or the evening where I consistently pump after a feed. Um, during that time. So with May, I always did like I'd put her down for bed. I knew I had a few hours and I would pump at that point. Holden, I did it in the morning. Um, So after his morning feed, I would pump. And so my body got used to making a little bit more milk at those times for each kid. And so I would have a little bit of an oversupply at that time. If it's not medically necessary, I definitely wouldn't recommend pumping after every single feed because your body is going to become reliant on that pumping and if you try and not pump, you're gonna be engorged, you could get mastitis, things of that nature. So um, pumping, picking a time every day and kind of teaching your body that it needs to make a little bit more milk at that time. And typically in the morning is when we have the most milk anyway, between like one and 5 a.m. is when our prolactin levels are the highest. Um, so that morning feed can be a really good time to do that. Um, but it's just kind of whenever you have hands to hold the baby. So that's why with May I did it in the evening and that worked better for us there but anyway um so you've got this little supply of milk going and then um you could start that around three to four weeks postpartum kind of the same that we're going to start the bottle feeding with baby and then when we're trying to give baby a bottle again we're going to be practicing that pace bottle feeding that i talked about starting around three or four um weeks postpartum you know, feed the baby on the breast, maybe just do one side if you normally do two, and then give baby a little bit of, maybe like an ounce, half an ounce to an ounce of fresh pumped breast milk in a bottle. Um, and do that a few times a week. Um, maybe have daddy take over one feed a day, but you need to make sure that if baby is taking milk from the bottle, like a feed's worth of milk, that you are pumping to replace that feed so that your body still knows that it needs to be making uh, milk at that time. But yeah, and you should be good to go for when you go to work. That would be my recommendation. But for me, that really um, has worked well. And for people that I recommend that to, that has really worked well. Now, 
this part of the video is for people who it's we're past that point we're past that three or four week point where it would have been easier to introduce the bottle and now baby's like i love boobs boobs are great i love the flow of milk that they give me i love the closeness that i have with my mom when i drink from the breast and this is where i was with may so like I said, I, I did start pumping at about three or four weeks postpartum once in the evening with May, and I had a nice little freezer stash. And at four weeks postpartum, I gave her a bottle. She took it great, no problem. And I was like, check, I am ready to go. And then we roll around to 11 weeks postpartum, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be going back to work next week. Maybe I'll go ahead and, and give her a bottle again, make sure that that still works. And that girl would have none of it absolutely none of it she screamed she kicked she pushed the bottle away and i was distraught because i knew i was going to be going back to work and while i was working night shift she still woke up at night to eat and my husband was going to have to put her down for bed at night um with a bottle because i would have already gone to work by the time she was going to bed so i was freaking out and i went to target and i bought every single kind of bottle there was and we tried everything and basically what we found out that worked for her is she liked the MAM bottles. She took MAM pacifiers, and so the MAM bottle was similar. And what we did one night, and this is something you can try, this is kind of in my tips and tricks to try, is one night I went and I slept in a totally separate room, and my husband, when May woke up to eat at night, so she was still pretty groggy and sleepy, he gave her a bottle, and I pumped in the other room. And that worked for us. I don't think that she really took a bottle gracefully for a few months after that, but she would take a bottle from him. I never really had a reason to give her a bottle, so I never personally gave her a bottle. Um, and we did great transition seamlessly between breast and bottle for the full year that she was taking the breast and the bottle, and then she just breastfed, and I didn't pump really much after that because she was sleeping through the night um, and didn't need um, pumped milk. So, And then she breastfed till 22 months. So tips and tricks kind of from my story. One, get somebody else to feed baby a bottle. If baby is snuggled up with you, they're going to be like, um, excuse me, I know you have a bottle there, but I also like feel and smell and see your breasts and I would prefer those. Thank you. So have somebody else feed the baby a bottle with you being in a different room and perhaps with even you being out of the house. Go get your nails done and see if dad or partner or support person or somebody else can give baby a bottle because again baby if they're with you they want you and they want your milk um when you're giving the bottle timing matters and i would not try and make a baby who's already angry and wanting to eat and frustrated try and take a bottle because they're like uh no i didn't want this i want you and now i'm extra pissed so Make sure baby, like I said, maybe has already eaten off of one side or isn't super hungry and that you are just trying at half an ounce to an ounce at a time with the bottle so that you're not wasting milk because once the milk touches the baby's mouth, um, textbook wise, you really should use that milk within an hour and then it should be disposed of after that. Um, so just starting with a very small amount of milk and somebody else feeding the baby who is not starving is going to be key. You can play around with different bottles and different nipple shapes. There are a whole host of them. Holden takes the Dr. Brown's nipples, no problem. He probably would take anything because he is now exclusively a bottle baby um, because I had issues breastfeeding him. But May uh, liked the MAM ones and she took those exclusively. Those were the pacifiers that, they, that she took. So if you have your baby will take a pacifier, try and get the corresponding bottle that's made by the same people as the pacifier uh, is made by. They're are a lot of different bottles that claim to be like the breast, that claim to collapse like the breast, that claim to blah 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 like the breast. Probably not any of them are really that much like the breast, but you're welcome to try them. It might be a good idea even to seek out, if you have friends who have kids, what bottles they have. They might even have some bottles that didn't work for them that you might be able to try if you're comfortable with that. Um, I wouldn't recommend registering for a whole bunch of one type of bottle because you might end up with a whole bunch of one type of bottle that your baby won't take. So if you're registering and you want to register for bottles, register for like the individual bottles instead of like a pack and that way you can try one and if that doesn't work you can return the other ones um, and try some other bottles. I wouldn't recommend trying more than maybe like two per feed because you're just going to have a really frustrated baby after that if they're really refusing the bottle. 
and give yourself some time and give yourself some grace. It's going to be okay. I promise your baby's not going to starve. Um, I would also recommend starting with a slow flow nipple, but if you know that you're somebody who has a crazy fast flow and baby's getting frustrated at that slow flow nipple, um, you might see if going up a size helps. Obviously, we want to make sure the baby's not guzzling it down super fast because we don't want them to develop a flow preference. But if you have a faster flow, perhaps that slow flow nipple is actually something that's making baby frustrated. Most people will do great with a slow flow nipple. My kids have only ever had slow flow nipples their entire bottle feeding careers. But sometimes if you know that you have a fast flow, a faster flow nipple will help. Try cold milk, try warm milk, try hot milk and see what the baby prefers the most. Some babies want to be held like they're at the hold on let me get my robot baby <clears throat> some babies like to be held like they're at the breast but some babies don't want to be reminded that they're not at the breast and so they might be preferred oh, they might prefer to be held out um, perhaps maybe even in like a carrier that faces outward and feeding baby the bottle or in a carrier that faces inward and feeding baby the bottle basically just trying every which way to Sunday to see if you can get your baby to take a bottle so we've talked about trying out different bottles, the timing, the flow, um, getting somebody else to do it, the positioning, those are all things that is, is important. I really think that when we did it at, during the night, because I was going to work night shift, I think that that actually was a good way to do it. Um, I haven't heard many other people suggest that, but I really liked it because baby was like kind of half asleep when she was taking the bottle and so she was a little less aware of what was going on she was like I just kind of want to sleep and go back down um so that was really helpful there I'm gonna ditch my little robot baby good night baby Carter um so kind of the last thing I want to touch on is if you have a baby who is really struggling to take milk that has been refrigerated and milk that has been frozen um, and you notice that your milk has a kind of not a, not a sour or spoiled smell, but like a metallic soapy smell, you might have something called high lipase. And basically it's just, you have a whole bunch of this enzyme that's kind of breaking down the milk in such a way that it distorts the flavor. Um, and it tastes different than if it were fresh from the tap. Um, so you might have a baby that prefers fresh milk in a bottle, but one that does not like um, frozen or milk that's been refrigerated for a little while. There's a few ways to go about this. So if you have a freezer full of frozen milk, don't freak out, don't throw it away. Um, you can do a couple different things with that. You can start mixing the milk, doing mostly fresh with a little bit of frozen and slowly increasing the frozen until the baby gets used to the flavor because there's nothing harmful about it. It just tastes different. Or uh, under the guidance of your pediatrician, and I wouldn't do this until baby was over six months of age, a few drops of alcohol-free vanilla extract, um, which you can get at like Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, will make the flavor a little bit more like that fresh milk um, that baby is used to. So sometimes high light paste can be an issue and you might have high light paste. I kind of think with my frozen milk, maybe it's a smidge high, but um, my babies really haven't seemed to mind. So um, something you can do with fresh milk once you realize that you have high light paste milk is you can scald it um, before freezing and that will kind of neutralize that light paste and help the milk retain its more normal flavor but if you do that you're killing some of the nutrients so if baby's going to the breast and taking a bottle that's totally fine but if you were exclusively pumping and going to be exclusively using that frozen milk before a year of age I would maybe recommend the vanilla um, alternative but again definitely double check with your pediatrician before adding anything to your milk make sure that they think that that is an okay thing to do um, but that's something I did personally um, but then Holden ended up taking my frozen milk just fine without it so I didn't have to continue to use the vanilla. I think with all these things, you know, if it's your baby is not taking a bottle at all, do not freak out. Um, babies are not stupid. They are not going to starve. They might do something called reverse cycling where they start wanting to nurse a lot more when you guys are together because they're getting less calories when you're separate. You also have the option of syringe feeding your baby, spoon feeding your baby, giving a sippy cup dependent on the age. So the bottle isn't the be all end all. And even if baby's just taking a few ounces when you guys are away, he or she is going to make up for it when you're back together. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely, if you have any more tips, leave them down below. Bye, guys.